All right, guys, so after a very long vocabulary list on 9.4, we can now practice all of those definitions and, and um, theorems, okay? Um, so I'm giving here example number one, use the given vectors below two, two parts, A, vector U, take away two times vector V plus vector W, and B, three times vector U. Now, I have drawn on here three vectors for the sake of simplicity. We will start here at the corner, and we will end here. Um, that's W, and then V, we will start here at this edge, and we will end right there. Similarly with U, we will start right there, and we will end right there. Um, okay, so as you know already, when you're adding and subtracting vectors or multiplying vector, you can start it at anywhere, but it's just easiest to start out at the origin. I'm as you can see here, I can technically draw the x and y coordinate anywhere on that given grid, but I'm just going to draw, draw it right there. Um, I'm going to do for both. How about that? Okay. So both of these problems, we will use quadrant 1. Okay, so I will start right there. So it says U, vector U is where you want to start. And again, you can start anywhere. You can start at the origin and go down. You can start here at the top and go up. You can start somewhere in between, just like there. Now, how do we draw it over again, vector U? We're going to count one, two, three boxes down and three boxes to the right. So if I started right there, I'm going to count three down and three to the right. Make the other dot. And remember, it is important to show the direction of your vector. Now that's just vector u. Now we have to minus 2 times vector v. Well, vector v is just horizontal and 3 units to the right, but minus means now we're going to go to the left, right? So 1 and 2. We're going to end right there. That's 2 times vector v. Now we will add vector w. Well, because it is an addition, we will go exactly the same way that the given vector w is going. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 up, 2, 4, 6, 7. 7 to the right. So we're going to go up 7 and right 7. So this is 3. This is 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 up is right there. And then 7 to the right is, I'm going to estimate this. So that's 2, right? And is that two? I want to make sure. Hold on, give me a second. Earlier vector v was three, so that's already three, and that's one, so that's one. My bad, okay. Sorry, I didn't see it earlier. So that's from here to here is going to be one unit here to here. It's kind of a big one unit, and that's just account seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here's my seventh, okay. Now, when we're adding and subtracting, it's very important to start where the last vector ended. So because I ended right there, I will start where it ended, and that, that's just the work, okay? I'm going to erase all these work dot right here. That's just the work. Now, what's the final answer vector? The final answer vector is where you started, which is right there, and where you end it, it's right here. Um, so that's where that is, right there. So this red vector, is the final answer that's vector u minus two vector w i mean two minus two vector v and an addition of vector w again the final resulting vector is where you started and where you ended okay let's try it again on this right side it said okay well i just want you to multiply three times u well there's no addition there's no subtraction it's just a multiplication so we are going to take u i know u is going downwards i'm not going to start at the origin because then i will be in quadrant number four in which i've already uh, drawn out quadrant number one um then i'm just going to start up here somewhere that's where i'm starting okay and remember we were counting down three right three so now i'm going to count down nine right nine this is a 10 by 10 so what i'm going to do is um, i'm just going to go all the way down two four six eight nine never mind it's not a 10 by 10 it's what is this 15 15 by 15 so that's a nine so two four six eight nine so there's my three times vector u now it has to go in the same exact direction as the original so there you go so this is three you just like that 
So example two says the vector v has an initial point p and a terminal point q. Write vector v in the form of ai plus vj, that is, find its position vector. Okay, so it says ai plus vj is the same thing as finding its position vector. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find vector v by taking x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. That's the same thing as saying a2 minus a1 and b2 minus b1. As you know already, vector v has two order pairs here. p is your initial and q is the terminal point. So um, this will constitute x1 and this will be your y1. This will be your x2 and that will be your y2. Okay, so the terminal side is when we end, where it ends. So that's your second point. So based on that definition, we will take negative 6 minus 3 and we will take negative 5 minus a negative 2. Yes, you will get the wrong answer if your point is in the wrong order. So from there, we will subtract and we'll get a negative 9 and a negative 3. Now, it wants it in ai plus bj. So vector v is your a value is negative i, negative 9i. Um, so negative 9 in the i direction. You can do a plus negative 3j or you can go straight to just minus 3j. So that could be like this, negative 9i minus 3j. Either one is perfectly okay to have. Okay, so I'm going to leave um, letter B for you to do on your own. Let's move to example 3. Find the magnitude of V. As you know already, the magnitude of V was given to you earlier in the vocabulary, which is the absolute value of A squared plus B squared. Well, A is negative 2, so that's going to be negative 2 squared plus B is 12, so that's going to be 12 quantity squared. That's going to be 148, which we want to simplify that down to. Well, 148, we know is 4 times 37, so that's going to be 2 square root of 37. So the magnitude, which is the same as the length, um, which is 2 rad 37. And we don't need to use a calculator, I just need you guys to give me the simplest radical form on that one. Now example four, now we are going to operate magnitude of V, take away magnitude of W. Now V is negative 2i plus 12j. That's exactly the same as this example, which we already found the magnitude. So now our job is to find the magnitude of W, which I'm going to leave you to do. Hopefully you found the magnitude of W to be if we do 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is going to be square root of 13. Now, magnitude V, take away magnitude W, is going to be, remember magnitude V, we found it already from example number 3, which is 2 rad 37, take away square root of 3. And again, I don't need you to punch it in, I just need you to give me the simplest radical form. You will get the wrong answer if you go and compute magnitude of W, take away magnitude of V. So make sure you do it in the order that it's asking, okay? Example 5, it says find the unit vector in the same direction as vector V. Given vector V is negative 2i plus 12j. Well, guess what? That's the same exact vector as example 3 and 4, same V, okay? Well, the unit vector, if you guys remember, it's the formula of the magnitude of V divided by its, not magnitude, I'm sorry, vector V divided by the magnitude of itself. So we know V is negative 2i plus 12j, and we found the magnitude of V already from example 3, and that was 2 square root of 37. Now we want it in the AI plus bj form. So that's going to be negative 2 over 2 rad 37 i plus 12 divided by 2 rad 37 j. And we are going to simplify that further. Well, we can definitely cancel the 2 so that's and rationalize. So that's now negative rad 37 over 37 in the i direction. 12 divided by 2 is now 6 on the numerator. 
and we rationalize the 30, rat 37, so that's now brought to the top. So in the bottom now is now just rat 37. I mean, sorry, just a regular 37 without the radical. And that gives us negative rat 37 over 37i plus 6 rat 37 all over 37. J and box that up. Now remember when you guys are writing a magnitude, not magnitude, a vector, make sure you have an arrow on the top. Um, I don't mind if you make an arrow like that or if you want to do it the way I do it, how just kind of half um, to the top or the bottom. Okay, you can even do like that. Okay, it doesn't really matter to me as long as you have an arrow to represent the magnitude. Now, let's go on to example six. As you can see, examples one, two, three, to probably seven are pretty simple if you um, know the formulas, okay? Write the vector v in the form of ai plus bj, given its magnitude v already, and the angle alpha mixed with the positive x-axis. So it says write the vector v in the form ai plus bj. If you guys remember, the formula was to find vector v if we know the angle and the magnitude, we just take the magnitude and we multiply by the unit vector, which was, remember, cosine of theta in the i direction plus sine of theta in the j direction. Well, they are using alpha here, so no big deal. You can swap it out. Alpha, theta, as long as you know it's an angle, then we are okay. Now, also, restriction was the, the angle itself has got to be between 0 and 360 degrees, okay? All right, let's rock and roll. The magnitude is given to you here for six units long. Cosine of 30 degrees in the I direction plus sine of 30 degrees in the J direction. Yes, you have to simplify that out because it wants it in just AI plus BJ. So cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2 in the I direction. And this is going to be 1 half in the J direction. So vector v, after you distribute the 6 throughout, that's going to be 6, not 6, I'm sorry. We're going to simplify that too. So 3, wrap 3 in the i direction, plus 3 in the j direction, and let's box that up. Okay. Now, why don't you try out example b on your own? Okay, so earlier I have asked you to do example um, 2b. Now I do want to go back and make sure we have the right answer. Did you guys get vector v was 3i plus 3j? Hopefully that's what you got. Now this example down here, example 6b, hopefully you got vector v is 7 rad 2 in the i direction minus 7 rad 2 in the j direction, box that up. Example seven of 9.4. Find the direction angle of vector v for each vector. So direction angle, remember by definition, theta had to be in between zero degrees or 360 degrees. Um, so just the first revolution, or if it's in theta, if it starts out in theta, then you keep it in theta, depending on the original question. So vector v is, example 7a, vector v is or equals to negative 2i plus 12j. So let me give you a visual so you know exactly what quadrant this is in. Negative 12i. So remember, i is in the horizontal direction. So we will start with 1, 1, and 2. Whoops. And 2. Uh, with the y, I will label it by 3. So, well, actually 6, because I need 12. So negative 2i, okay, what that means is we are going to horizontally go negative two units to the left and when we add vectors we continue where you ended so we are ending up at a negative 2i 12j so this is your vector right here this is what we want 
this is the resulting vector, which is the answer of two vectors when you add it together, two or more, I should say. So this angle right here is the angle that we're looking for, this directional error. Okay, so just like any other previous tangent of some angle, some theta that we're trying to find, always equals to y divided by x, and we will compose both sides with tangent inverse to get tangent inverse of, gosh, what's up with the spider web business? We already know that y is positive 12 and x is negative 2. We reduce that down to negative 6 or negative 6 over 1. When you borrow a calculator and punch it in, it will give you a negative angle. But we have to add 180 to get it back. So theta will come out to be about 99.46 degrees. And again, don't round until the very, very end. If I do not give you directions of how to round and just round two decimal places is the norm. Let's try it again in example B. Again, let's give you a visual of what this is, what quadrant is supposed to be in. It starts out with positive two in the horizontal direction. So we're gonna go one and two units. So positive two goes this way. Okay, and we will add negative 3 in the vertical direction. 1, 2, 3. So if you were to add here, the answer, the resulting vector is this guy right here. Okay, this is the real guy. Now we're looking for this angle. Remember, the directional angle has to be positive. So tangent inverse is what we will use over negative 3 divided by 2. Again, because it's in quad 4, your calculator will give you a negative angle, but we have to go positive direction. So we need to add 360 degrees. When you use your calculator and punch it in, it will give you 303.7 degrees about. Hey guys, all right, here is example 8 from 9.4. Finding the actual speed of an aircraft, <clears throat> excuse me, a Boeing 737 aircraft maintains a constant airspeed of 500 miles per hour in the direction of due south. The velocity of the jet stream is 80 miles per hour in a northeasterly direction. First, let's consider the difference between airspeed and ground speed. So we are going to talk about that one. Part A, find the actual speed of the aircraft relative to the ground, aka ground speed. Part B, find the actual direction in which the plane is actually heading or headed. So they give you some important information here. First piece of information, they give you airspeed of 500 miles per hour and that is going due south. Due south is just nothing but going south. So if you see the words due east, due west, due south, due north, that's just going straight up, straight down, you know, north, south, east, west. Next piece of information is the velocity of the jet stream. It's 80 miles per hour. Jet stream is the wind, and we will talk about that later. Northeasterly direction. This is exactly 45 degrees in between north and east. So before we go and draw out a compass, we will talk about the air speed and the ground speed. So the difference is this. On a perfect day, on a perfect day, air speed is the same as ground speed. It's 
So on a perfect day, these two would be identical. That means there's no wind. But most of the time, when you are flying an airplane, you are gonna have either headwind or tailwind. So some sort of wind. So but if you have wind blowing at the same direction as the airplane, blowing at the same direction as the airplane, then you're going to have your formula. Then air speed equals ground speed minus your wind speed. Okay? We can even move this around to say that the ground speed, ground speed equals air speed plus wind speed. Okay. <clears throat> this is just manipulation of formula. So you can do this or you can do this. Remember, the ground speed is the actual speed of the airplane. If you have wind, then your ground speed will be quicker because the actual, because you need to take the airspeed and you add the wind if the wind is going in the same direction. That's called tailwind. If you have headwind, then your ground speed will be slower than your airspeed because now you have to take your airspeed and subtract the, the wind. So that's the difference between airspeed and ground speed. And again, ground speed is the actual speed, okay? Factoring in the wind. So part A said find the actual speed of the aircraft, aka find the ground speed. So let's draw out our north, south, east, west. North, south, east, and west. You have an airspeed of 500 miles, 500 miles per hour in the direction of due south. So that's just going straight south. This vector, let's call this vector airspeed. So V subscript A. And that is going vertically down. So that's negative 500 j. Then it says you have a velocity of the jet stream. Jet stream is your wind of 80 miles per hour in a northeasterly direction. So technically northeasterly, so it's north, it's east, it's this direction. Okay? 45 degrees in the middle of those. But because I'm trying to add on to my <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm trying to add on to my airspeed. I'm going to add it to this vector here. Let me move this writing to the other side. So this is V of airspeed equals negative 500 J. So instead of adding it or drawing this out at the origin, I'm just gonna continue here. This green vector is vector of the wind equals 80, the magnitude is 80, okay, the velocity is 80, and it gave you an angle, a direction. So anytime you see direction, directional, that means you're looking for an angle, and the angle is going to be this angle from here to here is 45 degrees. And remember, when you're looking for an angle, you're always um, starting on the x-axis. So cosine of 45 degrees I plus sine of 45 degrees J. So that's a wind vector. We have grounds, we need to look for ground speed. So we will let ground speed be V subscript G equals V subscript A for airspeed plus V subscript wind. For, or W for win. So this is what we're looking for. 
the vector of this, and then we're going to take the magnitude, and that will give us the speed. So V of A is negative 500 J plus the wind speed. I need to simplify out the wind. Ready? V of W equals 80 cosine of 45 degrees is rad 2 over 2. Sine of 45 is also rad 2 over 2 in the J direction. So V subscript W is 40 rad 2 I plus 40 rad 2 J. So that's what the, the vector for the wind is. So now I'm just going to add it here, behind here. Plus 40 rad 2 in the I direction, plus 40 rad 2 in the J direction. Let's try to combine like terms. Final answer for the vector, not the speed. V subscript G is aka ground speed, aka actual speed is, let's put I in the front, since there's only one I term, we are going to write I in the front. Looks like you have two J terms. That means we can put them together and then factor out your, your J and put it in the front. I'm not going to use the calculator to punch this in. I'm just going to leave this as is. This is the resulting vector for the ground speed. That's really not as what is asking in this in this note. It's asking to find the actual speed. So now we just have to think the magnitude. Although I will be asking for this on your on your test. So make sure you box this up here. So the magnitude of the ground vector, the ground speed vector will give us the speed. So the magnitude is a big square root, 40 rad 2 quantity square, that's your a square, plus b square would be this whole thing, quantity square. That's why I said I don't need to use a calculator, calculator as long as it's in the simplest radical form. Now I will use the calculator and punch this in. This will give us about 447.03 with the use of a calculator. So let's write a complete sentence for our answer. The actual speed is is 447.03 miles per hour. And let's box that up. We just answer part A. Part B said, oh well, okay, you know the speed. What direction is it? What angle is it going? So to find the angle, remember you already have the, the vector for the ground speed. Now we just have to find the direction of this airplane. So direction is angle. Angle is tangent inverse of y divided by x. And that's going to give us, what's y value? Tangent inverse of y is negative 500 plus 40 rad 2 divided by 40 rad 2 see so take your calculator enter that in to see if you have matching answer with me when you enter that in your calculator you should have a negative 82.73 degrees well let's go back to our makeshift compass up here Okay, so earlier we added, okay, this is your vector for the airspeed, this right here. And then we also did another one, another vector, we added another vector for your wind, which is the green one. When we add two vectors, we should come up with your, let's use a different color, this one. This is where the airplane is going, okay? This is your ground speed vector, the actual speed of the airplane. So that's in quad four, which is awesome. I'm going to make it bigger down here. So we have this vector, the ground speed actual vector. When we borrow the calculator, we punch it in, it tells us this is a negative, negative 82.73 degrees. Well, that means if that's negative 82.73 degrees, as you can see, this is totally not drawn to scale. Would you agree that, let's just take whole number for the sake of simplicity. So this is about negative 83 degrees. So that means this right here, it's about 
seven degrees. Okay. So how do you write the answer in math? Uh, north, south, east, and west. So to verbally spell this out, this is how you write the direction. The actual direction is seven degrees, seven degrees east of south. Okay, seven degrees east of south. Because this is what's happening. Because the airplane is starting the sentence, the airspeed of 500 miles per hour in the direction of south. I mean, you go straight down, and then the wind blew it 45 degrees. So now it's going a little bit slightly east of south. So it's going because of the wind, it's going seven degrees east of south. Now your book is not going to is not going to spell all of that out for you. So the way that this book is it's writing is seven degrees east is in the back and then south is in the front. So this is that. Okay. This is the end of your example eight.